Premier, thanks for finding time to talk to us in India. That's a pleasure. Uh, how was your trip to India? Uh, the, the trip was uh, really quite eye-opening. Eye uh, I'd always uh, envisaged in India, and, and I was always excited about going, but uh, I have to say, when I went, uh, it was uh, even more spectacular than I thought. Um, uh, the people, the culture, uh, the facilities, but most importantly, the direction uh, that Prime Minister Modi is uh, taking the country. I think he's inspiring not only the country, but the world. And uh, to see firsthand and to experience it, and did it across so many of the communities, uh, it was a very worthwhile and a very enjoyable experience. Mm -hmm. If I asked you to put a finger on a couple of highlights, uh, what would that be, Premier? Well, I mean, Vibrant Gujarat uh, is a pretty incredible event. Uh, I mean, the, the vision uh, the Prime Minister Modi had... Uh, uh, initially when he put that event together was to encourage people to come to, to Gujarat but uh, it's become much bigger uh, and brighter than that and uh, over a hundred countries were represented, uh, Australia had the largest delegation uh, and to hear world leaders uh, articulate their support uh, for Prime Minister Modi's vision and, and asking investors and uh, companies and, and really countries around the world to participate uh, in his vision and delivering a very ambitious uh, economic program and infrastructure program. But at the same time, I think what's resonated deeply is the connection of that economic program into taking hundreds of millions of people out of poverty. Mm. And I think that really is uh, what's resonated. To hear that uh, and that direction and, and really the world engaging uh, with the challenge, the, well, uh, engaging on how can we all together can deal with the challenges uh, in India and to help them achieve that vision. Uh, that was probably the highlight. Uh, and, and obviously, uh, I had a couple of very spectacular curries, so uh -huh. <laughs> I'd have to put that on there as well. <laughs> the stomach is still holding? Very much so. <laughs> <laughs> we saw you play cricket with a couple of uh, children there. I thought uh, you will say that's some of the highlights of your trip. Yes, I mean, it was. It was. And uh, uh, there is a, a Magic Bus is, is a great uh, charity that, that operates uh, in some of the, the kids that come from the most disadvantaged uh, communities. Uh, um, some of those slums, but uh, you know, when when you see them come out with their smiles, there is this sort of life and positive energy and hopefulness, and uh, I, I did find that uh, both touching, but um, also filled me with a, with a sense of inspiration that there is hope, uh, real hope in India, and um, you know, those kids can potentially be the, the next generation the Prime Minister Modi is talking about, and. Uh, bringing hundreds out of hundreds of millions of people out of poverty and uh, and to play on that cricket ground uh, was quite a lot of fun as well as a, as a cricket tragic uh, to see that that was a ground that uh, Verinda Seawag uh, got 294 right. and uh, he missed out on getting his triple century he should have just whacked it over the top and <laughs> <laughs> and got it but it was a great history at the ground and uh, yeah but so to be able to play that and to see that history but but also uh, with the kids it was it was a very special experience. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, when uh, Prime Minister Modi was here, he happened to meet you and um, he discussed some of the initiatives uh, to take forward uh, the commercial links between New South Wales and India. Uh, how is that progressing? Yeah, well, that's, well, that's progressing very well. And uh, I mean, the Prime Minister, in, in my meeting, he said that I must come to, to vibrant Gujarat. And, uh, you know, it's obviously a difficult time for us now where we are in the midst uh, of, of an election campaign or very close to an election. And uh, it's, it's tough diary wise, but I thought, well, the opportunities are so immense in India and uh, the personal invitation of the Prime Minister, I must go. And, and I'm so pleased I did. Um, and some of those opportunities uh, that I see, uh, they're, they're much bigger uh, than I envisaged. And yes. if you look at the trade between China and India, it's about $2 billion. Uh, China, it's about $30 billion. So there's a huge, same sort of size population, there's a huge opportunity to grow. Uh, and under the vision and leadership of Prime Minister Modi, I can really see that. And you know, one good example where I think there's going to be significant growth is the Smart Cities uh, project. And uh, we had a look at the gift in Gujarat, um, you know, the, really the finance centre, the anticipated finance centre of, of India. And the starting, uh, the, the building of that uh, city, um, they, they are well advanced, but uh, the opportunity we have of some of the skills here I mean, Barangaroo is a very similar project that's, that's coming to life right before us and the skills of our engineers, our urban planners, our, our architects, uh, our financiers. There's, there's a whole group of people uh, that I think could play a significant role in, in the vision of 100 smart cities and, and certainly we'll be taking a, a group and a delegation to go and uh, meet with the gift and, and see what skills we can bring and, and what opportunities there are for, for our businesses here to play a role in in enacting that vision in India. Mm -hmm.
Well, uh, what about uh, the Australians of Indian background, for example, who are living in New South Wales, especially in Sydney? What role do you think they can play in these bilateral relations? Well, I, I think very, very particularly. I mean, obviously, uh, uh, lots of entrepreneurs in, uh, in, in the Indian community. And I mean, what's often missed is the fastest growing language uh, in New South Wales is a Hindi language. Um, so it's a, it's a growing uh, sort of population, uh, very forcefully becoming a, a part of the, the New South Wales economy, more broadly, the global economy. And uh, the free trade agreement uh, that we hope is, is signed by the end of the year, which both prime ministers have a vision to achieve, um, you know, what's clear is that the businesses, that the Indian businesses here, uh, with those free trade agreements, well, that they are really going to open up uh, and make it much more cost competitive, uh, easier to to, uh, to transact. Um, and I think uh, you can see uh, the Indian businesses here playing a leading role um, in terms of uh, that trade growth, should the free trade agreement come. Of course, uh, you also uh, lead the Opera House during the Pavali celebrations, and uh, Jappy Time is something that you have launched. Uh, how do you think that's all working in terms of attracting more Indian tourists to Sydney and uh, New South Wales in general? Well, I think that's it, it's a really important strategy, and uh, yeah, because it's such a big population, I mean, close to 200,000 here. Uh, I mean, obviously, the Jappy Time is really focused on hug time, um, and I did encourage people over there to, to hug. Um, <laughs> But it's more uh, thinking about the families and friends. So uh, th those in India that have got family and friends down here, well, well come on down. Yeah. You know, come down. It's been a long time since you've seen them. You know, come down and hug them. Uh, and while you're here, come to, well, I think, the greatest city in the world and the greatest state in the world and look at some of the beauty here and the attractions here. So uh, I, I think the campaign's resonating. I mean, the, the increase in numbers was about 13% last year. Uh, we expect it to grow by 100% in the next five years and those sort of campaigns together with the, the movies, so the, the film being made by the, the producer here with obviously the Bollywood experience, uh, The Un-Indian, uh, which has got Brett Lee starring, um, you know, beautiful actresses and um, great scenery, but, but importantly showing uh, New South Wales and uh, as uh, India looks at uh, one of the movies uh, with, with some stars in it, they also see the backdrop of New South Wales. And I think as a tourism strategy, uh, that's very powerful. People will see it and think, well, well I've enjoyed the movie, but I'd love to go and look at uh, where it was shot and uh, some of that scenery. Yes. Well, coming to local elections, which is uh, not off too far away, uh, with the majority you have in the House of Representatives, it should be a walk in the park. Uh, there's no such thing as, as an easy election. And uh, I think what you've seen in recent times is that electorates are very volatile. But I, I think it's a very important election because uh, it's, it's not just about uh, who's going to win the election, it's really about uh, where is New South Wales going. And, uh, and I think that in the three and a half years, uh, we have got to a position um, that the economy, where New South Wales was last, last in economic growth, last in jobs growth, last in business confidence, housing starts, uh, we're now back and leading the nation across those economic indicators, taking a lot of hard work. Uh, but it is happening. So there's momentum in the economy. Uh, we're delivering infrastructure that the community has waited for, big rail projects, road projects, uh, hospital projects. Again, it doesn't come by chance. It comes by hard work, and, and we want to do even more. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have $20 billion additional infrastructure money we want to spend and part of our Rebuild New South Wales program. Um, so uh, the capacity to future-proof our city, um, the second harbour rail crossing is part of that should we win the election. It's not only the jobs and investment that comes as part of it. Indeed, the, the expectation is the economy will grow by $300 billion over the next 20 years if we enact this plan. Uh, but it's also the capacity to increase uh, across our rail network at the capacity by, by 60%. So 100,000 commuters an hour um, can use the rail network. And, and that is something that I think uh, takes New South Wales from being a great city to really the best global city there is in the world. And, and that's the vision. So the election's going to be tight, uh, but uh, I strongly sense uh, the election will be asking for their backing, you know, to back our plan, uh, to, to continue New South Wales moving and to get New South Wales ahead of the curve in terms of the infrastructure it needs. Mm -hmm. Your predecessor, Barry O'Farrell, uh, said that he wants to be known as uh, the infrastructure premier. What kind of slogan would you take to the next election? Oh, I don't, I mean, I don't, I don't want a slogan. Um, I, you know, what, what I want to do is to, to continue to, to build the infrastructure we need. I want to continue to improve the services we're offering. Uh, I want uh, New South Wales to be the best it can be. Uh, we, we got used to accepting second best. You know, why? I mean, why are we happy to see the New South Wales economy uh, lag the rest of the nation? You know, why are we happy to look at our sports and cultural facilities and say, so, well, we're happy to 
just leave them as they are. We don't want to compete with the best in the world. We don't want to enhance them and grow them and build them. You know, why, why have we got suburbs growing but you know, the, the health facilities and school facilities aren't following? Well, uh, we want to do that. And uh, I, I want to be someone, uh, pure and simply, that, that backs New South Wales. Um, to me, that's what the election is about. It's, it's not about me keeping my job or the government getting another chance to govern. Uh, it's about backing New South Wales to become the best we possibly can be. And, you know, that's really what uh, the election will be about. Well, many of the MPs, both sides of politics, were paraded in front of the ICAC. But there is this negative image about politics and politicians in the community. How do you think that you are going to overcome that kind of a negative image? Yeah, I, I mean, I understand it. I mean, I, I really do. And as I've got around the community, I can understand the disappointment and some of the actions I've seen, not just in recent weeks, but months and years out of our I mean, it's unacceptable. I mean, you, you put people in to lead, uh, you're asking them to, to take decisions and represent their community with honour, uh, and they have let them down, there's no doubt. So we have taken action, uh, very strong action, both personally in terms of our party, we've taken action and appointed a former ICAC director to improve governance and taken the finance responsibility and established a former premier and, and others uh, to, to oversee that. Uh, we've also taken action against lobbyists, we've taken actions on donations. Uh, and I will continue to do that. Uh, and anything I can do to strengthen it, uh, I will. Uh, but I'd say to the community, you know, back me uh, and my team uh, to, to clean up politics in New South Wales. We've taken action, uh, we will. Um, and uh, you know, I understand the cynicism. Is there one final message, Premier, to the Australians of Indian background? Well, I'd, I'd just say you know, thank you for the contribution. Uh, it's, uh, I mean, I think we're, when we lit up uh, the Opera House of Diwali, um, it, it was a symbol of, of how important uh, uh, the Indians living in this state uh, have become. Um, it's the fastest growing language, uh, the contribution the economy is booming, uh, the opportunity they'll play in driving the economy. I mean, as I said, $2 billion trade but $30 billion from China. Uh, they should be about the same, you know, if not more, because uh, India is going to be the strongest economy uh, over the next 10 years. That's what uh, all the forecasts are suggesting. So. Uh, it is a huge opportunity, but I thank them uh, uh, for their help and participation and, and just the critical role they play uh, here in New South Wales. Premier, thanks very much for your time. No problem. Thank you.